public gathering, a social gathering that was clearly against the rules at the time. Now Boris Johnson knows this and he knew this all along and he's just tried to lie to the British public and it seems like he's laughing at them now. I think it's appalling people will be disgusted by it, I'm pretty certain of that. And Lorena, who of course we need to remind you, is currently being investigated herself by Durham Police. To George Parker, political editor of the Financial Times, who joins me down. George, where's his sleep for Prime Minister this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Well, I, I said it's a much stickier situation than I would have thought 12, 12 24 hours ago to us. Because I think a lot of people had assumed that after last week, when he wasn't fined again, breaches of the rules by the Metropolitan Police, the steam had gone out of the affair, many Tory MPs were saying, let's move on, you know, Sue Grace report was going to be a bit of an afterthought. But I have to say that the mood of Westminster has changed quite considerably, I think, since the publication of that picture. Which is odd, because Downing Street would say, well, you know, it's just a picture of telling you what we already knew, that there, were, there was an event and the Prime Minister was there. But I've noticed the power of the picture, isn't it? The bottles of wine on the table, the glasses being raised, it looks like a party and smells like a party. And I think probably the Prime Minister's going to face a pretty tough week this week. And the Sue Gray report, George, do we have any indication what we might actually hear and see this? We don't officially, but um, my guess, the, certainly the expectation is this week. My guess would be that it will be published tomorrow because it's the day when the Prime Minister will be in the House of Commons anyway for question time. And then the normal thing would be that he would then make a statement off the back of Prime Minister's question time where he replies to what Sue Gray had found. So if I was betting on it, I'd say tomorrow is the most likely day. Is it fair to say that if you are of the opinion that we, the Prime Minister, is a duplicitous two-faced charlatan who will say what he has to to escape, or he's someone who's just been trying to get on with his job who occasionally walked in to say farewell to a senior colleague, the battle lines are already drawn. Do you think there'll be much movement between those two sides? Well, you're right. People, this may just reinforce what people already think about the Prime Minister. Um, but, I mean, there are a couple of subplots here as well. The question about the misled part which applied to Parliament about what happened on that day. It was there a part of it? Well, it probably was, in most people's view. And a second subplot, which has emerged this morning uh, on the front page of the Times, suggesting that that meeting that the Prime Minister instigated with Sue Gray, who was obviously with Sue Gray, may have involved the Prime Minister saying to her, look, the Metropolitan Police have looked at this, um, let's let's just uh, read up this public report and the suggestion in the Times is that the Prime Minister put pressure on Sue Gray to drop her report, which is something his team, the Prime Minister's team, denies, but nevertheless big allegations to make against the Prime Minister and he's trying to cover this up. Lastly, difficult one for the mess as well here, George. Yeah, hugely difficult for the match possibly. I mean, their, their handling this is, is opaque to put it generously, but it's baffling really. I mean, this this there were there were fines issued for this event, but the Prime Minister himself who was at the event was not fined himself. Um, I was Rishi Sunak fined for wandering into a birthday party in the cabinet room. And when people at that party where the drink was flown you know, profusely, only, we were told only one person, or at least one person at that event was fine, but not everyone. I don't know, it's extremely confusing now, but they definitely got questions to answer. George Parker, political editor of the Financial Times, read all about it. He's co authored the piece in today's paper on this 12 after 7. That's, that's the journalistic background. If you want to the political, Jonathan Ashworth is a Labour MP and also Shadow Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. And you've been around the House of Commons for the last instructions. What do you see happening over the next 24 to 48 hours? Good morning. Uh, morning, Nick. Well, I think it's very difficult for Boris Johnson to reconcile what he said at the dispatch box in Parliament, which in days gone by, <laughs> lying in Parliament was a resigning matter. It's difficult for him to reconcile what he said from the dispatch box with the reality of what we've seen. I mean, it is a party. There's bottles of drink all over the all over the place. He's toasting everybody. We're supposed to be in lockdown. I mean, there was a bottle of sanitizer, so I suppose there is a nod to some of the uh, COVID restrictions which were supposed to be in place. And I think, look, you know, I come at it from this angle. We all know what Boris Johnson is like. Tory MPs know what Boris Johnson is like. But the government now is completely paralysed by the preoccupation with Boris Johnson's political survival when we have this cost of living tsunami. We need measures to protect people now and action to grow the economy and get more people into jobs for the future. Yet the focus of Downing Street and this government is Boris Johnson's political survival and not the financial survival of your listeners, Nick. And I think in the end, Tory MPs are going to show a bit of backbone.
and do what they know they need to do and get rid of it. And for clarification, Mr. Asher, as you say, we quotes, we all know what he's like. Just spell it out for my listeners. What is he like then? What's the point at which you're driving? Well, you know, he, he, he's a, he has a fast and loose relationship with the truth. And his interests are as his own interests. He's driven by his own personal ambitions, which is why the government is now solely focused on his political survival. Well, the Conservative Party is divided from top to bottom. Some of them will come on your show and speak out openly, but you know as well as I do that plenty of them are saying what they think privately about Boris Johnson. And why this is such... Uh, the, the real scandal here for me is that he's been breaking the rules, but at the same time, he's doing nothing to help people with this cost of living tsunami. He's not bringing forward the measures that we have called for, for example, on the windfall tax, or more support for our pensioners who are really struggling at the moment. Uh, instead, the government is divided from top to bottom, focused on this, and the British people deserve better. Lastly, how is wine and crisps different to beer in Westminster dear to different to beer and curry in Durham? Well, you've just got to look at the pictures. I mean, as I say, there's bottles, bottles of drink strewn all, all over the place. Well, he's the bottles of beer were there in Durham, is that correct? But he, he, he's merrily toasting the assembled crowds. Of course, this is the point when we were supposed to be in... Merrily toasting, is it I see. Okay, that's the No, 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 this is the point when we were supposed to be in full lockdown. I think this is completely different to uh, Keir Starmer's situation in, in Durham, which where you were allowed to have work meetings with others, and you were allowed to eat when you were working <laughs> at that point as well. So I do think it is, I do think it's different. But of course, the point is, Boris Johnson at the dispatch box in Parliament said there was no party that day. That's clearly a lie. Grateful for your time, as ever. Thank you, Labour MP and Shadow Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, Johnson at Jonathan Ashworth, appearing here on LBC. Just two emails which really do cover it. Mark in Essex, I can't believe still people are still talking about this nonsense. Let's just move on to something that matters. Meanwhile, Sean in Surrey. This proves Boris Johnson has lied again and again. If he's an ounce of integrity, he should resign. Despite all the right-wing puppets in the media, including you, this is not going away. Those are the two views, and we'll come to more of that in a moment. Also, the Elizabeth line has opened, and we've got our special cross-rail challenge. It's years late and billions of pounds over budget, but today Crossrail finally opens. I'm LBC's Rachel Venables at Abbey Wood. I'll be on one of those new trains soon, racing across to Paddington. And I'm LBC's Theo Usherman, catching the bus, catching the boat, catching the tube, to find out just how slow it is compared to Crossrail. We'll see Theo on Friday with all the land race. 7.16 LBC News headline, Simon Conway. London's Elizabeth Line has finally opened to passengers. The Mayor, Sadiq Khan, says it will transform the city. Labour says there is now no doubt that Boris Johnson has lied to MPs after photos emerged of him raising a glass at a Downing Street leaving do. MPs have published a scathing report into the evacuation from Afghanistan as the country fell to the Taliban last year. LBC weather, rain in the east clearing, then a mix of sunny spells and scattered heavy showers across the UK, a high of 18 degrees. Go left on the roundabout. We see travel line, Joanne. We're very busy on the A13 eastbound at Grays, and that's following an accident. There are restrictions in place. Delays on the A1 both ways to Apex Corner, and that's because of the ongoing works. Also because of roadworks, there are delays on the South Circuit Road both ways to Kew. In fact, there are delays all the way back onto the M4 and also over the bridge from the Kew Retail Park. Very busy on the M25 on the Surrey stretch. It's slow clockwise from Junction 5 at the M26 to 6 at Godston, and then anti-clockwise it's very busy from Junction 21 at the M1 to 19 at Watford and the first services on the Elizabeth line are now running and the line is running to a good service LBC Behold the Heinz sandwich soft fresh bread caressed by the tastiest the creamiest mayo yeah everything else is just filler Heinz sandwich may also contain cheese, ham, salad, tuna, crisps, or a million other less important ingredients than Heinz seriously good mayo. Bread sold separately. Call Pink for Lottery now. 0345 6060 This is LBC. Everyone can make little changes to waste less. Hello McDonald's. We're no different. Like three years ago, old cooking on hold to make fire diesel. Hey, I'm Phil Metro. Or recycling my use but half a cup of McDonald's. To make a birthday car for me, thank you, Dad. It's the start of a plan to recycle and reuse even more. Because we know when you change a little, you change a lot. 
After 200 yards, cross the roundabout, second exit. Hold on to your mugs. He's full fibers here. New broadband that can handle anything. And whatever you think that means, times it by a zillion and dip it in chocolate. The because this broadband exit. connects 100 devices in your home. Search EE full fiber. 18.3% UK availability. Check coverage at ee.co.uk. If you or someone you know owned or leased a diesel vehicle between 2009 and 2020, you could be entitled to significant compensation. At My Diesel Claim, we're experts in handling these claims, and more than 600,000 people have already started their claim with us. Simply visit our site now to check your vehicle's eligibility instantly. It's free to sign up, and you can start your claim in seconds. Visit MyDieselClaim.com and join thousands of others starting their claims today. Wearing glasses can make you look intelligent. That's right. But not in William's case. I'm oh, sorry, what? William knows Pompey to 30 decimal places. Yeah, he knows the whole of Hamlet's soliloquy, and he knows how to rebuild a car engine. It's true. <laughs> but he didn't know that stylish, well-made glasses start from 19 panels at Specsavers. So his expensive glasses that he bought elsewhere just make him look a little bit daft. Oh dear. Complete single vision glasses for 19 pounds as back savers. You know you should. Nick Ferrari and Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 20 minutes after 7 is the time. Let's catch up with the headlines. Tell you what the newspapers are leading with this morning as you uh, start your day. Or for some of you, of course, turn in after your shift for the front page of the Daily Telegraph. Pressure on Met over pictures of PM raising a toast. In number 10, the Guardian talks of fresh danger for Johnson over number 10 drinks pictures. Uh, that's also very much the theme for the LBC website. PM under pressure from Tories after being accused of lying. Uh, the photographs are most of all of the front pages. The eye lockdown party photos hit PM locked down in one PM locked down. Oh, I see lockdown in one down in one PM. I've got it. Well, I suppose I did lock down and out, so it's fair enough. Uh, that's the Metro. Party PM misled comments is the front page of the Times. The Daily Express, nothing to see here. Yard says Boris broke no rules, so I think probably out on its own they're trying to suggest the conversation has moved on. No chance of the Mirror Daily Mirror agreeing with that. How did he get away with that, this with that picture? Um, Mr Johnson's picture is on the front page of The Sun, but it's not their lead story. Theirs is some PCs are on the pitch. And this is police looking at CCTV film of a pitch invasion spotted off-duty officers about the supporters. Now, this is after Bournemouth one earlier in the month. And some off-duty police officer took part in the pitch invasion there. Uh, the Daily Mail has nothing, and just triple check, no, absolutely nothing concerning Boris Johnson on its front page. Uh, it doesn't even have a, a, a picture, or well, that infamous picture. Its picture is of the Queen on her new model. I, I think it's new. I don't think I've seen her in it before. Uh, what appears to be an adapted golf buggy, which obviously is going to add to her ability. So we celebrate that. She's at the Chelsea Flower Show, so she had her own Chelsea track dress. But uh, their lead story is rail strike could cause blackouts, power blackouts, petrol shortages, and empty shelves. Move if rail unions vote to strike. Four and five services could be cancelled. Jason, your reaction, how does this change your view in any way, shape or form of what we pretty much knew was going on anyway? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, we're all a little bit bored with this because I think the normal person is to see here drinking beer and eating food the same as Boris eating food and drinking beer. Yeah. But can I, can I also say, Nick, I don't think anyone's picked up on it. If you replay the clip of the Lady MP, asking Boris Johnson a question at the dispatch box. He doesn't lie. She says to him, will he tell the MPs oh, when he'll tell the No, 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 that's dancing on that. I know what you're saying. He's not saying. No, he is. Yeah. I think he is. No, I know what you're saying is that will you tell me if a party took place on November the 10th? No. He says and no. whatever took place. But then the way he goes on is and whatever took place uh, it makes it quite clear that the first half of the sentence, sorry, the second half of the sentence refers to the first half of the sentence. Come on, Jason. Yeah, but I think it's 
Turning a blind eye to smaller crimes, such as what 
what's known as shoplifting uh, due to the cost of living crisis. Is that something you endorse in the West Bits? No, I think my view is that people can make up the be dealt with through that. It's for the courts to decide when they deal with these matters whether there are factors that need to be counted and taken into account in the circumstances of the offender. So there is no constant charity in the space. Thank you for your time today, Johnson, Chief Counsel of West Midlands Police, Vice Chair of the National Police Chief Council, and Senior Responsible Officer Responsible for Police Race Action Plan. 7.34 breakfast at meeting for RE on LBC Straight to the New Sun Conway. The first Elizabeth Line trains are now running through London. The project is three and a half years late and four billion pounds over budget but promises to increase capacity and speed up journey times. Right. Boris Johnson is facing fresh accusations he lied to Parliament over Downing Street parties. Photos have emerged of him raising a glass at a leaving do in November 2020. The Prime Minister previously told the Commons there were no parties on that date. A new plan to tackle racism in the police has been published by senior police leaders. It's aimed at tackling discrimination, improving confidence levels among black communities and raising the number of black officers and staff. LBC weather, rain over eastern England, soon clearing, then a mix of sunny spells and scattered heavy showers across the UK, dry and brighter in the west this afternoon, a high of 18 degrees. This is LBC. Now at Vodafone, get the Oppo Find X5 Pro 5G with five times the data. Yes, that's right, five times the data. That's worth celebrating. A huge 250 gigs for only £46 per month plus £49 up front. Go online or in store. Vodafone, the UK's reliable award winning network. Rachel Venables, explain what you'll be doing. Rachel, morning to you. 
Good morning, Nick. Well, it's three and a half years behind schedule, four billion pounds over budget, but here comes the words at times I thought I would never say. The Elizabeth Line is finally up and running across the capital. The first train left the stations at just after 6.30 this morning from Paddington out west, and here at Abbeywood in East London, where, let me tell you, go right on the roundabout. Hundreds of them lined up in the rain to be on one of those first crucial services, and very soon I will be getting on one of those trains myself shooting over to Paddington to see just how quickly this line runs. Thanks for that Rachel. I think your journey time is estimated to be just over 20 minutes, isn't it? Just lastly once you actually get wheels moving. Is that right? That's the plan. Just under 30 minutes and I'll be able to train every five minutes so I'm, I'm ready to run. Okay, so you should be there with a good wind shortly under around 8 o'clock or later after to your colleague LBC's political editor who's going to be taking a different way, a different form of transport. Theo, how will you be making your way? for the wilds of Abbey Wood to Paddington Station. I did all the glamorous uh, jobs, Nick. I'm standing uh, about 200 yards up the road from Rachel at a bus stop in the rain. And I have three options. I can get the 469 bus, I can get the 301 or the 472. Now that's going to take about 20 minutes to Woolwich. I'm then going to get on the DLR. I'm going to go over to Canary Wharf. I don't think I'm going to jump on a boat, one of those clippers, up to Embankment, onto the Bakerloo line, and I arrive at Paddington, I think, at about uh, 9 o'clock, if I'm lucky. Stay in touch, the race is on. Rachel Venables versus Theo Usher. Theo is we like the trip from Dr. Shivago by the time it's done, isn't it? Uh, we'll see how we do. Thanks for that 7.40. Let's get into the world of business. We mentioned, of course, the business aspect there. Opening up so much of London, the importance of the Elizabeth line. But to the world of finance and business, Danny Hewson, financial, financial analyst at AJ Bell. Uh, Andrew Bailey has been referencing the fact that price rises have hit a 40-year high. Inflation now, of course, running at around 9%, but it's not his fault. Morning, Danny. It's not. Good morning, yes. Uh, he's, he's speaking about this because a former governor of the Bank of England last week, Lord King, said that actually the Bank of England, their actions did play a part in the huge After levels of inflation that we're seeing at the moment. Remember, go right during the pandemic, about. of course, the Second economy came exit. to a crashing halt, didn't it? And they started pumping money into the economy. They brought rates down basically to try and stoke the engine to keep us all going. However, coming up the back of that, as we all get back to work, as people go, go right out and spend, the bank. what happened Second is exit. prices rose because there was so much money sloshing about. However, Andrew Bailey has said, look, you know, this is not my fault. The big issues behind inflation are the fact that we have this incredibly tight labour market. So we've now got more vacancies than people out of work, which is a really difficult equation to, to work out. And we've also had these shocks in terms of global supply chains. He says that that the, the big reasons behind inflation and that the bank is already acting its raised rates four times and is prepared to do it again to keep inflation under control. And to be fair to Andrew Bailey, the huge number of then issues take the second inflation are external. They're, they're things that affect right across the world. But there are a lot of people that say that they should have acted quicker and sooner. All right, Danny, I'm afraid I've got to act quicker After and sooner because I've got to get a move on. Sorry, such a brief one. We'll talk about both. And Danny Houston is financial analyst with AJ Bell. LBC Business Updates. With Direct Line Business Insurance. Insurance for your business that you can rely on. I do want to hear from Dave and so many others with their views on these pictures that have been published by ITV News of the party, but let's come back to the Elizabeth Line and bring it to the conversation. Turn Andy Byrne, who's Commissioner of Transport for London, obviously it's a, it's a big day today, so congratulations to you, but there are still links to be done, there's still parts of the Elizabeth Line we to develop. What is the timetable for those, Mr Byrne? Good morning. Sure, good morning there. Well, there was always planned to open the Elizabeth Line in phases. My solemn promise to Londoners was that we would get this phase, the central part, open by the first half of 2020. We delivered on that promise. So next on my to-do with my house is to get the street open and the next phase, the next phase being to connect trains coming from the east from Sheffield through the tunnel to Paddington and uh, from the west from Heathrow and Reading After through the tunnel to Abbey Wood. That will be right uh, open on this autumn. Awesome. And then Second the final exit. phase, no later then than May the 23rd, May of, uh, 2023, when we connect the whole lot up. 
What is the final phase, Commissioner? So the final phase is uh, is running trains from Sheffield in the east, and Peter and Reading in the west, uh, all the way through to the opposite destination. So end to end, Sheffield to Heathrow, Sheffield to uh, to Reading. Go uh, right no late on the second exit. Then you have commitment. reached your destination. In the same way that I gave you, Nick, I think on your show a commitment that we would open uh, this section by the first half of 2022. We just delivered on just now. Okay. While I have the better view on the line, there does seem to be an increasing drumbeat about the possibility of rail strikes. Four in five services could be cancelled if RMT chiefs with support for summer walkouts. Appreciate, of course, this is not under your direct control, but it has a massive impact for those who work or live in London. Your reaction to that? Well, well we're hoping to avoid that. Not sure I can only speak for TFL rather than for the, uh, the national network, but uh, let, let's just look at the fact that this dispute is about uh, terms and conditions, pensions, etc. There are no changes planned to our pension. There are no changes planned to terms and conditions. Uh, where we need to make savings, we've made a solemn promise.